Welcome to module 11.6. We'll do uh, one more module here. This is the compiled return statement, right? So how does the return statement look? It will be return the keyword return followed by just a semicolon or an expression. So the expression is actually uh, optional here, right? You may have the expression or not have the expression. So how will you code this return statement? You first check for the keyword return. Then if expression is found, the next one is, ref is refresh. Then you call compile expression. Then what will compile expression to? It will the code with uh, code will it will generate the code for the uh, the expression evaluation of the expression and the result of that execution will be on top of stack. Now you check for slash expression, right? Then you just say return. The only code that you need to re write here is return. Right, so when you return, if you go back to the original VM implementation, the calling function will take the result from the top of the stack, right? And that is essentially so. Already, this this is on top of the stack, so the calling function will take the result from the top of the stack. So this is how uh, the return uh, basically works. But if you don't see an expression, then it means returning nothing, re just return, right? So you do some action and just return. There, the calling function will always, uh, as per the VM implementation, the calling function will always see some result on the top of the stack, right? So even if you return nothing, there should be something on the top of the stack because the calling function, after you return, the calling function will pop the stack and start processing, right? So, so for that purpose, if you don't see an expression, if you do not see an expression, if expression is found, do this part of the code. If, if expression is not found, then just push constant 0 and return, right, that is all, right. So because every subroutine call in VM is expected to return a result on top of stack, so just push some constant 0, right. So, so that is the thing. So, so this is how the return statement works. So these are the two lines of code. So you, this is how you code the return statement. So what have we seen so far? is for 11 different routines in this module uh, starting from, uh, so let us quickly uh, go to this part. For the 11 different modules uh, starting from compile class, compile classware deck, subroutine deck, parameter list, subroutine body, var deck, subroutine body again something little more on subroutine body, then compile st statements compile let statement, compile if statement, while statement and return statement. So 11 such subroutines. We have said what is the, cont what, what should be done there and whatever we have put on green is what should go into an output file and that will be the .vm file. So create a, so you take an uh, XML file as an input and you generate a .vm file as an output and whatever should go into that VM file is basically whatever you are seeing in green plus of course uh, some part which is dedicated for constructing your symbol tables namely your uh, global uh, class symbol table and your subroutine symbol table that happens in your classware declaration and your uh, uh, parameter list and your var declaration three subroutines where who are responsible the classware deck is responsible for all the class variables your uh, parameter list uh, is uh, responsible for all your arguments of your subroutine symbol table and your uh, uh, var deck, compile var deck is responsible for all your local variables there, right? right. So in the next module that is 12, we are left with only four subroutines namely compile do statement, expression, expression list and compile term, but these are slightly involved you uh, so you have seen maximum of four co four lines of code the involve I involvement here would be a little more number of lines of code that you need to write for this and uh, so so we will finish those four in the uh, next uh, starting of the next module and we'll also give you a demo of running a code from jack to hack so right so the entire thing we'll see from jack to hack so what we are expected to do, this is a very, very defining moment for you. You are writing a compiler on your own. Uh, so don't ditch this effort, see. 
and uh, this module is very short and you have to just code what we have told right so and what we have understood just keep coding so finish the coding of the 11 routines here we will be just left with four more routines which we are going to discuss in the next module and uh, plus of course the main right and you compile and check for any compilation errors all right i have i have just uh, oriented it from a c programming point of view you could have written in c++ or python or whatever but just check uh, there is an uh, there is no issue there in terms of compiler and you can also check the correct construction of your class symbol table and at least your first sim subroutine symbol table so we we may not cross the first subroutine but at least the first subroutine you are seeing in your class that symbol table you can check whether it is properly constructing you can print it out at uh, correct position and see if it is printing out so uh, and uh, in project 11 you actually have uh, a number of uh, uh, programs uh, right so that you can basically see uh, so if you go to nan to tetris and project 11 so you see a number of programs average complex arrays uh, convert to bin, pong, uh, 7, square. So, for all these things, you can tokenize it, uh, then you can parse it, get the XML file and then uh, start running this code for that and see whether the class symbol table, for example, if you take this main, you can see whether this, uh, so you will see there is no class variable here, but you will see at least three uh, three uh, variables being uh, done here right so there are three uh, three local variables so your subroutine your class symbol table should be null that is there should be no entry in that but your uh, current subroutine table the first sub main has at least three entries you can check whether this at least is formed there so is your symbol table properly constructed that much you can see Right, and that you can do for every jack file that you are seeing. But there are, for example, pong has four jack files. You can do for all the four jack files. Similarly, seven has one, of course, and then square has three uh, jack files. So you can see for each of these jack files. So you have to first tokenize, then uh, create the XML file, and then put your current code generator, and see uh, at least to this stage. So we will again meet in module twelve, and we will take it forward. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.